So the game of Fortnite, we all know it, everybody knows it, we know it for the Battle Royale part of the game, but there is two parts of that Battle Royale that makes it unique. It is the building and the storyline. In this video, we're going to be focusing on the storyline, I'm going to be showing you guys the whole entire thing, starting from Season 1 all the way until Season 9. But yo, what's up guys, it's your boy, I'm Nick Arc here, welcome back to the channel. In this video, like I said, what we're going to be focusing on is the whole entire storyline of Fortnite. But if you guys enjoyed this video in any way, shape, or form, and also want to support it, make sure you drop a like on the video, as always, and don't forget to let me know down below in the comments your personal favorite part of the storyline personally but I don't have to be all the live events is your favorite like Kevin also the live events anything like that let me know your thoughts on that down below in the comments if you guys want to support me one step further and enjoy my content make sure you go to your Fortnite item shop type in code I'm Nick Ark no spaces send me a video or picture of on Twitter Instagram or discord they bought with my code and I will shout you out in my videos and link your channel down below description sadly I'm not gonna do any of this video because I want to get this video it's gonna be super long. I don't want to waste any time in the video. Without further ado, it's your boy Arc, and let's get right into the whole entire Fortnite storyline. Alrighty guys, so the storyline aspect of Fortnite, it began back in Season 3. Not Season 1, not Season 2, there was no storyline piece to the game back then. It was just a regular Battle Royale game with a regular map, regular loadout, everything like that. Just a simple game back then. And it started building up traction, everything like that, but the game really blew up when the whole Battle Royale aspect came to the game. So, it all began when there was a comet back in Season 3 that appeared in the sky. And if you guys remember, if you guys were playing back then, everybody was so confused. It was truly insane. No Battle Royale game had ever put anything in the game like this before and this was just the beginning once we saw the comet appear in the sky we started to see that it started getting closer and closer and closer as it was getting closer throughout the season Fortnite started putting up these telescopes that appeared throughout the whole entire map everything like that and we started to think what is this game becoming it was truly insane so then towards the end of Season 3, this is when things started to get really, really strange. So meteorites started appearing from the sky, they started raining on the map every now and then. We didn't know what time, everything like that, but then it started raining on the map. It wouldn't deal damage to any players, but only deal damage to like trees, buildings, everything like that. It would deal damage to them and destroy them. In the final circle, if you guys were playing during then, if not, then you're going to hear this. In the final circle, there was a meteor every two seconds. You could not like do anything in the final circle. Everybody thought the game was breaking. I don't even know what was going on and then the beginning of season 4 came and season 4 is the season that changed Fortnite forever the meteor that we all looked at during season 3 it hit Dusty Depot and made Dusty Divot and Dusty Divot if you guys don't know there was a government facility it's still there right now but it was much in good condition it wasn't wear down everything like that they were hiding the fact that when the meteor hit it created an egg and this egg changed the storyline forever and on top of the big meteor thing hitting Dusty Depot, there were these little meteorites that came as it was all happening, hitting different parts around the map throughout the whole entire map, but I'll go back to them parts of the map later. So, there were two major parts of the Season 4 Fortnite storyline. There was the movie aspect, and then there was the government aspect. The movie aspect is pretty irrelevant. It was basically everything the government did in Season 4, they were covered up by acting like it's a movie, they were shooting a movie, everything like that, but in reality, they were setting up for what's actually going to happen. So, in Season 4, if you guys remember if you guys were playing back then there were these things called hop rocks and these hop rocks were created throughout the whole entire craters throughout the map they were in dusty divot everything like that there were these little things where you would consume and they would make you like jump really high they were pretty cool i'd love to have them back honestly and the government was as they were doing research on the big egg that came with the meteor they were actually collecting these hop rocks throughout the whole entire map and bring them to the evil lair this is when the evil lair was created in the game by the way forgot to say that in the middle of the season but that's when the evil lair was created to the game the evil wear plays a major part obviously right now the evil wear is pretty abandoned and nobody really lands there anything like that but this is when the storyline started getting really 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 good so as the hop rocks are being transferred from all around the map into the evil wear they were actually making a rocket in the evil wear so this is why i think fortnite season 4 is one of the best storylines ever because as they were worrying about the movie aspect of the storyline and as they're worrying about the government side of the storyline they were also building a rocket in the evil wear so this is by far my favorite ones like I said but the hop rocks were actually used to power up the rocket as energy and as fuel so the rocket event took off in its whole rocket event so the rocket event was by said rocket event a lot of times but this rocket event was by far one of my favorite events in Fortnite history it was the first ever live event I think performed in a battle royale game there were so many people streaming it so many videos on it but I'm gonna play with you guys my clip of it if you guys want to skip to the clip, I'll put a timestamp on screen right now but enjoy and I'll talk to you guys after the clip Go! 
Oh, uh, oh, it says, it says launch. It says launch. It says launch. Oh my. Yo! It's launching! It's launching, boys! It's launching. It's coming down. What the heck, bro? It's all games are stopping. All ga Oh! It's going down! It's going down! It's gonna hit the. What the? What the heck? It's going for. It's gonna go for tilted! It's going like, Oh! It hit tilted! Yo! Yo! Wait, what? Wait, what is that? Wait, what? What? It hit tilted? It's going for it. Anarchy Acres, too? Wait, wait, no, it's not. What the heck's going on? What the? Right, it just hit the air. What the? It just it reappeared right in front of me. Yo, what the? <laughs> what the heck? So I'm not going to go too much in depth of what the actual event is because you showed the clip, everything like that, I just want to move on. But the one thing I want to explain from that clip is how the Rifts actually caught the um, rocket, everything like that. It was by the Omen skin. If you guys remember the Omen skin I put on screen right now, it was introduced either in Season 3 or Season 4 and it played a major part in that part of the storyline. So as you guys saw by the end of the clip, it created that big rift in the sky. This big rift actually created these little rifts that spawned around the whole entire map. I remember there was one at Lonely Lodge, the other one was at the motel. If you guys played back then, you know what those locations are. And they started sucking in parts of the Fortnite map into those rifts. And then they started bringing in stuff from other dimensions into the Fortnite map. There was an anchor. There was a dinosaur skeleton. Everything like that. They just started spawning around the whole entire map. And then Season 5 came. And Season 5, it created... I feel like Season 4 or Season 5 was where the game really blew up. It was called The Clash of Dimensions or something like that. And then it brought in, it brought in Paradise Palms. And then here, the whole storyline aspect, you can skip to like the middle of it it was when kevin the cube came to the game i know everybody loves kevin the cube everything like that as you can see on screen right now that's what happened the rift started sending lightning strikes at this little form of cactus whatever you want to call it it started hitting each individual cactus and then the rift went away and then a purple thing spawned and then shot the cube onto that and that's where the cube spawned so like I said, nothing really happens throughout Season 5 until the middle of it when Kevin comes into the game. Once Kevin comes into the game, he goes around the whole entire map, places these ruins. Once he places down the ruins, he goes into Loot Lake and dissolves like a sugar cube, basically. I'll put it on screen right now. I found it pretty funny how no one expected the lake to turn into a giant trampoline. So it's pretty hectic the last couple days of Season 5. Now we're going into Season 6, and the island in the middle of Loot Lake goes up because it sucks up all the energy from the island, and now it's a floating island in the middle. And that would create Leaky Lake. It's not Loot Lake no more, it's Leaky Lake. And then it goes around the whole entire map and creates energy from these ruins that Kevin placed down in the first place. So like how the Hop Rocks gave the rocket energy, the ruins are now giving the floating island energy. So it goes around the whole entire map and then it reaches the middle of Loot Lake. And then here is when the Fort Maris actually starts. So Fort Mares is basically when the zombies came to the game. I know a lot of people hate zombies, but personally, I had no problem with it. Thought they're pretty fun, gamey good loot. But what basically happened was as the zombies came into the game, the floating island in the middle of Loot Lake, it actually sprung out and exploded. And then Kevin was left in the middle, and then there were these floating islands around Kevin. So it was a floating island in the first place, and it broke out into more floating islands. Once it all happened, there was a little bit of season six, everything like that, a little bit of hyped up. It created this purple thing that went into the sky. This purple thing slowly got bigger and bigger and bigger as Fort Mares went on, went on, went on, and then Fort Mares ended, and then it created the Butterfly Event. The Butterfly Event, people say it was the best event. I thought it was a really good event. It was basically where we went into Kevin's dimension because he exploded. He drained all his energy into the cube. We exploded. I mean, he exploded. We didn't explode. He exploded, and then we went into his dimension. We touched the butterfly because it's the Butterfly Event, and then we came back, and his, his remains was slow on Loot Lake. So fast forward a little bit towards the end of season six, we get the little ice cloud, the little snow cloud, whatever you want to call it. It appears at the southwest side of the map at the bottom. It gets closer and closer and closer, and then it begins season seven. At season seven, we get an iceberg that crashes at the southwest side of the map. It eliminates places like Flush Factory and Greasy Grove, and we get the introduction of the ice can. The ice king has a lot of stuff up his sleeve throughout season seven, which you are going to find out. So what happens was he has a castle named Polar Peak, and it's made 
made of ice. It slowly starts to thaw, and then we unveil that it has a dungeon. In that dungeon, it holds the Fire King. The Fire King wants to escape, and how he does is he starts to melt all of the ice in Polar Peak. But the Ice King doesn't want the Fire King to escape, so he creates this whole ice event that happens, and he brings snow throughout the whole entire map. Skip a little bit, we're fast forwarding. The F Fire King creates the snow to melt all along the map, and then he creates earthquakes and shakes throughout the whole entire map. And then that's basically all of Season 7. At the beginning of Season 8 is when we get the volcano. And along with the volcano, we get treasure maps, we get pirates, and we get the banana king, everything like that. And then nothing really happens towards the middle of the storyline or the middle of the season. And then we start to get these dig sites. These dig sites are very, very important. We get one start to spawn, and then we get another one, and then we get another one. And what we have to do is we have to dig as a community to get these open. We got them real, really quick. The Fortnite community is very powerful in things they want to get done. So once that gets done, it unloads a little bunker area over by Loot Lake. And then we get an update and then it brings the loot lake bunker whatever you want to call it this has a bunch of things to it a bunch of storyline aspects to it it spawns these ruins these ruins go around the map i'm not going to go too in depth because it was recently we get a ruin goes around the map get some energy from the community because we have to get every single one around the map we get five of these ruins we get them around the map do a little community challenge like i said and then it activates the loot lake event what happens during the loot lake event if you guys don't know what happens i'm going to go over it anyway it basically we go into this vault, the vault unloads, everything like that. We get a new weapon, it's the drum gun. Some guys like it, some guys don't like it. Not gonna go too in depth with that. We get the drum gun, the volcano erupts, it destroys Tilt the Towers and Retail Row. Once again, leaves the house that we all think is gonna get destroyed. It leaves that one, and now we're in season nine right now. And here is where it gets interesting. So what happened was, in the cutscene, Jonesy and the banana are walking around the map. They see the volcano erupting, so they go into a bunker. This bunker, they're in there for so long because they lost the key. They don't know what's happening. And then they, then these, these futuristic things go out of the map. They open the bunker, and then they're in the year 20, 20, 30, whatever. They're in the future, basically. I don't know what year exactly, but they're in the future. The whole map is futuristic, and that's where we are right now in the storyline. I thought it was pretty appropriate to make this video right now because we're in the beginning of the season. People are probably wondering what the storyline is. So that's all I have for you guys in this video is just letting you guys know the season 9 storyline going from season 1 all the way to season 9. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you guys did in any way, shape, or form, we made it this far into the video, comment Nick Arg storyline then below in the comments. So a special surprise and now you made it this far into the video. Let me know down below in the comments your favorite part about the storyline in general and make sure you guys subscribe to the channel if you are new as always. Without further ado, it's your Winter Garg, and I'll talk to you guys in a couple hours with a brand new stream, and I can't wait to see you guys there. Peace.